In this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to build on what we've started in the previous videos. We're going to take the, the workspace that we generated and remembering that our goal is to build this app here. And I want to set up the app, the main CSS, HTML, and I want to start creating our components. So we're going to do the, the, the basic layout of our app. So when you're building something like this, the first thing that you have to do is if you're beginning from the end, if you're saying, okay, I want to build something that looks like this, I have to take this app and I need to decompose it into a series of components. So if we look at this, what are the components that we have? The first component that we have is we have our entire app. So this whole thing that we're building, we're going to consider to be a component. That's the parent or the top of this tree of components that we're going to build. So this is our app component. And the app component has already been built. So we'll come back and look at, at what it has in it in a minute. Then we have two components that are hosted inside of the app. So what are they? Well, on the left here, we have a menu. And for simplicity's sake, I'm going to leave the menu as one thing. We could break it down even further and we could say that each one of these um, menu items that you click on is also, you know, is also a component. So this is a component, the menu is a component, etc. But I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to do it all in one. The third component that we have is we have this component here on the right, which has information about our bridge. It has two kinds of information. It has a visual representation, so a map and it has textual information and statistics about the bridge, which is positioned up at the top. So we have an app, we have a menu, we have the bridge information, three components so far, and the bridge information is broken down into a panel at the top for the text, and number five, we have the map. So we're gonna build five components, all right? So let's, let's talk about how you, how you put these components together. When we created our initial workspace, what Angular did is ng set up for us an initial app component. And you can see that inside source app, I have app component.ts, app component.html, and app component.css. So what is a component? Well, a component is a class. You can see here that my component is called app component. And my, my component has been decorated with this component decorator, which is extending this class with extra information for Angular. So it says a number of things. It says that there is a template URL. So this is the HTML file that defines the template for how this component is going to look in the DOM. There are potentially a series of URLs for different style sheets. We only have one at the moment that's been defined, app.component.css. And there's also a selector. So we have a selector app root. And you can see if we do a search, so here our, our component is called app component. If I do a search for app component inside of the source code, you'll see that it, it comes up in a number of places. It comes up in appcomponent.ts. That's where we're working with it here. But you'll notice that it also comes up in app.module.ts. So the root module for our Angular project also has it. You can see that it's being imported. And then you can see that it is being declared and bootstrapped. So you can see that there's a bunch of bootstrapping boilerplate work that needs to happen for components to get registered and to get brought into the rendered app that uh, Angular is going to create and manage for us. In other words, there's a bunch of work. So creating a component is creating a bunch of files, wiring those file names into your module, etc. So I don't want to have to do that manually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Angular do it for me. And I'm going to use the ng generate command. We used ng new to create our workspace. Now we're going to use ng generate. 
and I'm going to tell it I want to generate a, a component and I'm going to give it the name. So for example, if I want to make my menu component, ng generate component menu, you'll see that it's created three files and it's updated a fourth. So inside of my editor now, you can see I have a new directory, which is nice. So it's got app and then menu. So it's keeping everything organized. All components have their own directory like this. I have a TypeScript file for my menu component. I have an HTML template, which is bare bones at the moment, but there's something there. And I have a CSS file, which is empty, but um, where I can put styles for this. And if I look at my main app module, you can see that the menu component has been imported. So that has been updated and it's been registered so that it's gonna be part of my app, okay? So I wanna do that for all of my different components. So I know that I need a menu. I know that I need a bridge info component, which is gonna be everything on the right inside of my, to hold my other two components, which are the bridge info panel and the bridge info map. So a lot of, let me just expand all this. Look at all this code that has been generated for me. So Angular is, it's really verbose. It has a lot of boilerplate. It ha I mean, each of these files, there's a lot of you know code that is just boring to write. And so we use tools to write it for us, but it's also very explicit. So you can, you can understand what's going on here because everything is very clearly labeled or decorated in the language of uh, Angular. Okay, so we've, we've built out our various components like so, and we're ready to start thinking about how we're gonna represent this in the DOM. How's the page gonna get, get created? Um, one thing I'm gonna do at this point is because I'm gonna be developing for quite a while here, I wanna have my code compiling and running, and I wanna be able to see it in the browser. So I'm going to say npm start, which is gonna run ng serve, which is gonna transpile my code, bundle my code, generate source maps, start up a hot reload web server, etc. all the things that we talked about in our earlier videos. And let me clean up some of these things. Compiled successfully. So I'm gonna reload this and we have our, our base uh, app, which is showing the default things that have been created for us. Okay, so let's make some changes here. So the first change that I wanna make is I wanna, I wanna start working on my root index.html, or at least I wanna show it to you so you have some sense of what it is that's, that's happening here. You can see that we have our page, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna change the title of this, Angular Bridge, and you can see that there's, as we said, there's no scripts, there's no style sheets, all of that stuff is gonna get generated as bundles and it's gonna get injected later on. So that stuff, we don't have to worry about it right now. You can see that I have an HTML element, I have a body element, and inside the body element, I have an app root element. So this app root element, where did it come from? If you go back and look at your app component.ts, you'll see that in the component decorator for all of your components, it's going to specify the name of a selector. So this is the element type that you can use in your HTML in order to be able to work with in order, in order to be able to work with this uh, particular component. If you're coming from React, in React we tend, we don't tend to use this kebab case like app-root like this. I mean, you could, but you would tend to do it as, you know, you it would probably look like uh, app, just app, or you might say app-root, and you would, you know, you would use this in JSX, and you would define it like that. We're doing something similar here. Um, Angular makes it possible for us to use our app root like so, okay? So far, so good. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna start working on some CSS layout and I'm gonna build my layout based on Flexbox, CSS Flexbox. Um, you can use, there's tons of libraries um, that we'll talk about in later, later uh, videos 
But I'm going to try and do this just with some basic CSS. I'm not going to pull in a lot of different frameworks and so on here. So for the kind of layout that I want to build, a multi-column layout, I could do a couple of things. I could use CSS Grid, which is very powerful and would be perfect for this. Or I could use Flexbox. And I'm going to use Flexbox throughout the whole design. So I feel like it's I'm going to stick with it for the whole thing. If you haven't worked with Flexbox before, let me just give you a quick either refresher or teach you how this works. What I have here is I have a small little web page which has a main element, and inside the main element, I have two divs, div one and div two. So if I run this, you can see down here in the right, I have a web page which has one and two divs. And a div is a block level element, as you know. So each block level element gets its own vertical space. And you can see that, so the first one here, it, it takes up the entire width of the page and then it knocks down to the next one and it takes up the entire width of the page and so on. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to do some CSS on this just to change things around slightly. So let's, let's write um, selectors for one and two. And um, what I'll do here is I'll change the, the background color of one and I'll make it orange. And the background color of two and I'll make it yellow and I'll rerun this. So here you get a better sense of what's going on. You can see that we've got two divs and um, they're stacked on top of each other. You can also see that we have this extra border around the outside. So this is really what my app is gonna be like right now, the, the thing that I'm gonna be trying to build. I wanna turn that into a two column layout going vertically. So what do I have to do? Okay, the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to get rid of this extra white space and I'd like to make the entire page fill the available space. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that I want my HTML element and my body element. I want them to have margin zero, padding zero. So I don't want any margin or padding and I want them both to occupy 100% of the height. So you can see that by default, the way that these are working is that they're taking 100% of the available width. I don't have to do anything to make that happen. But the way that height works is that it is determined, it's, it's based on the internal contents of that element. What I wanna do is I wanna alter this so that I have 100% HTML and body. They're gonna take up all of the available height. And I also wanna play around with the containing element, the main element. So let's get a selector in here for main. I want the main element also to occupy 100% of the available height. So let's just run this and see how it looks. Okay, that looks a little bit better. So you can see that these two divs now occupy the full available room inside of the web page. The HTML out, HTML is the outer one, then inside is the body, and then inside that is main, and then inside that is one, and then two. So we've stretched that so that they're gonna push right out to the edges of the window, which is great. That's gonna do what we wanna do there. But we don't yet have what we want on, the rest of it's not working quite the way we want. So let me show you how Flexbox works. So what I'm gonna do is, because main the main element has two different elements inside it. So it has two different divs inside it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the browser to display the contents of this main element using Flexbox. So I'm going to say display flex. I'll run that. And you can see that already it's changed. Already it's changed. So one of the things that happened is these have become, these are like taking up the same amount of space, and you can see that they're both going 100%, they're filling 100% of the height, but instead of being stacked up and down like this, they're now going across. So the default way that Flexbox lays out elements inside of a div, if you say I wanna display flex, is it, it lays them out in a row. So it starts at the, at the left and it fills over to the right. So that's what's happening here. If you don't specify it, that's what happens. So this is optional. You could also say that you want to do it in column. 
And if I did it in column, instead of starting at the one side and going, it'll go from the top and it'll go down. Okay, so let's get rid of this for a second. Now the next thing, so let's, if I run this, I have them left, I have them looking the way that I want them to look, but I don't have them occupying the right amount of space. So what I wanna do is I wanna say to the browser, okay, imagine that this is divided into thirds, one third, two thirds, three thirds. And I want one to take up the first third, and I want two to take up the second two thirds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna specify display flex on the parent, and then inside one, I'm going to say flex one, and inside two, I'm gonna say flex two. So you'll note that what I have now is I have one plus two equals three. So I'm saying I wanna divide this into three, and I want this one to take one unit of the available three, and this one to take two. You notice I'm not saying pixels, I'm not saying this is exactly how much room I want. I'm saying I wanna have a flexible arrangement here where this one takes up a third and this one takes up two thirds. So if we run this, you can see how this looks. Now if I change this with, see what's happening? So these are both gonna change. They're gonna change so that Flexbox is always gonna keep them using that same ratio, which is perfect. That's, that's what I want. I want this to be like that. If I were to change again, if I were to say flex column, and if I were to run that, I get the same thing, but instead of being left to right, it's happening down. So the important things to note here are main, main is the parent element. I'm setting display flex on the parent element, that's going to affect all of the children. And then each of those children, I can specify how much I want them to flex, how much room I want them to take when they're doing this, okay? I wanted to cover this. If you haven't worked with Flexbox before, it's important to, to see this because we're gonna use this a fair bit in the way that we're gonna do this. Okay, so we, we need to do a little bit on our, um, let's do a little bit on our CSS for this page. So I'm gonna to go to the global styles. So these are style.css is global styles that aren't specific to any one um, component. They're for the whole page. So I'm gonna say I want my HTML and my body. I want them to have a height of 100%. However, I want them to have a max height of 100% as well. In other words, I want them to expand to fill the available space, but I don't want them to go beyond the available space because I want to keep I want to keep this thing square inside of inside of the um, page that I'm working on. So that's good. I want to drop all extra spacing, so I don't want any margin. I don't want any padding. And I think what I'll do is I'll just set um, a font and I'm not gonna spend too much time at this, but one of the things I like um, is using a system font stack. So there's a number of them you can get, but essentially if you want a sans serif font, you can, um, you know, I can use this set of native fonts that'll work on every, one, on every operating system. So no matter whether you're on an Android phone or you're on Windows or you're on a Mac, you're gonna get, um, you're gonna get the kind of font that you want for what we're building. So let's, let's grab this and I'm gonna say that I want the font family to be equal to this font stack. Whoops. And I'll save this. Okay, and let's also change our body so that we are going to use display flex and we're going to flex downward. And save that. So we're saying I want everything in the body. There's only one thing in the body, the app root. I want it to flex down so that we, we have it going down. 
Okay, so let's go to our app component HTML. Here's the template for our HTML. And it says here, delete this template and get started working on your project. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab everything and I'm gonna delete it. If I save this, I'm gonna have basically an empty page. There's nothing, nothing there now. So we have to, you know, we have to change this. We have to fix what's here. So if you're coming from React, you're used to, in JSX and React, you have this idea that you need to have a root element. A component needs to be a single element that you put in here. In Angular, you don't have to do that. You can, Angular's going to, when it puts the app component into the page, it's basically gonna create an element for you that's gonna hold on to this. So it's gonna host it in an element. However, if you wanna keep your sanity when you're moving between these different frameworks, it's not a bad idea to always have some sort of a, an, a root element. So let's say I have a div and let's call this our app. And inside of this, I'm going to use my main two components. So I have a menu component called app menu. And I also have this bridge info component that we generated with ng and it's called app bridge info, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use those here. So I'm gonna say that I wanna have app menu is one element in here, and the second one is app uh, bridge info as the second. Save this, and you can see that we have the same basic idea that we had with um, this JS fiddle that I was playing with here. So what I want to do is I want to get it working like this, okay? Currently it looks like this. If we inspect these, you can see inside my body there's an app root, inside the app root there's a div, and inside that I have the app menu component and I have the bridge info component. So I have these two components that are in here, okay? So we need to we need to do some some styling on this component. So instead of putting these styles inside of our style.css because that's global to the whole page, global to the app, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this instead on the app uh, component CSS, which is currently empty. All right. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to make it so that the element that is holding on to our uh, component, I want it to stretch to have 100% height. So there's a way for you to target this in CSS. There's a pseudo selector you can use called host. So host means the component that holds everything in this template. And I'm gonna say I want its height to be 100%. Remember what 100% means. It means 100% of the available height in the parent. So saying, make me as tall as I can be. But remember we said, I want the, I want, let me go back here. I want the HTML to have 100% height. Inside that is a body. I want it to have 100% height. Inside that is going to be our app component. And I want it to have 100% of height as well. So that's what this says. The next thing we have is we have that div that we created. We have an app div. You guessed it, height 100%. And I also want to use Flexbox because I want to lay these things out beside each other. So flex, flex direction is row. I don't have to put that, but it's not wrong to put it. And I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to tell the browser that I don't want to have scroll bars. So I don't want, I want to keep all of the content inside of this element. I don't want anything stretching out down below it. So I'm going to say that I want overflow to be hidden. I'm going to do one last thing before I leave the app, and that is I'm going to set a breakpoint for, so for when the screen changes width. So I'm going to say that on screens, if they have a max width of 400 pixels, so, if, so this is for a narrow screen um, on a phone, for example, I'm going to change something about how my app works. I'm going to specify that I want the flex direction to be column instead of row. So if you're on a narrow screen, instead of going wide, I'm going to go tall. 
And you'll see this a lot with apps where you'll shrink them down and all of a sudden things get stacked. Okay, so if you're paying attention here, we have to do, we, we need to work on these, these two, let's go back to our HTML for a second. We have these two components. I'm gonna give this an ID of menu and let's give this one an ID of bridge info, okay? So I wanna style these two elements so that they work as well. So let's go to CSS again. So we're gonna say menu, menu and bridge info. So same thing we did a minute ago, we're gonna say take 100% of the available height And we're gonna specify how much we wanna flex inside the parent. So the parent is displaying flex. I wanna flex one unit here. And down here, I want to flex two units, like so. I'll save this. And you can see that already my page looks quite a bit different. So you can see that I've got, if I start changing the width of this, you'll see how I've got the beginnings of a menu on the left and over here I've got where my map is gonna go. If I inspect this element, you can see the two elements, they're occupying the right amount of space. Now this menu, I want to be scrollable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change one last thing and I'm gonna say uh, overflow auto so that if the contents of this element are longer than the available height, which they're going to be, then I wanna get scroll bars so the user can scroll through it. However, over here, I don't want any of this to scroll and I don't want the parent to scroll, I've set it to hidden. So I'm gonna be really careful about which parts of my page can scroll and which parts of my page aren't, aren't going to scroll. All right, that is a good place to pause. And in the next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on building out this menu on the left and getting all of our data from the bridge data set displaying in there.